It's one of the Earth's most powerful forces. So hot, almost nothing can withstand it. So volatile, it explodes from out of our planet's deepest recesses. To harness it, scientists have long dreamed of a radical new green technology that could turn this into this. Now, in a remote California wilderness, France's Rhine Valley, and a remote island nation in the North Atlantic, that dream may be on the verge of becoming a reality. It has the greatest potential for providing the most renewable energy for the world. If it does, polluting power plants could become a thing of the past. Welcome to the geothermal frontier. It's minus one degree Celsius at well number 26, 40 kilometers east of Reykjavik, Iceland. Hey. Engineers brave these daunting conditions as their drill reaches a depth of two kilometers. They've been at it for six days straight. For more than 100 years, most deep drilling has created oil gushers. But if engineers here drill deep enough into the earth, they can reach something that could be even more valuable, superheated water. It's the fuel of a radical technology that turns the heat of the earth into electricity. If geothermal power succeeds, it could spark an energy revolution and drastically reduce our dependence on fossil fuel. As these workers will attest, Finding hot water deep below the Earth's surface is no easy task. Looking for geothermal systems at, at considerable depth is very, very much like hunting for a needle in a haystack. And they need to find that needle quickly, because a rig like this can cost up to 40,000 euros a day. Well 26 is an experimental project with a lot riding on its outcome. If large deposits of hot water are found here, the power company will build several high-tech geothermal power plants in this area, like the nearby Headless Sadie complex. The overall function of the wells and power plants is to locate, then harness heat from deep within the earth, a process that gets little press and most know nothing about. Hidden deep below the planet's surface lies the mantle. Here, magma roils, superheating rocks which then heat pockets of groundwater, causing pressure to build just like a tea kettle. If an opening occurs, this is the result. Geysers, fumaroles, and when magma erupts to the surface, spectacular volcanoes. If engineers drill deep enough into this heated underworld, they'll find the necessary ingredients for making electricity. There are really three things that we need to find a geothermal resource. Hot rocks to heat the water. We need water in the first place in the rocks, and then we need fractures to enable that hot water to get from where it's been heated up to the surface. If drillers hit water 300 degrees Celsius or higher, this is what comes out. A torrent of steam capable of rotating a turbine and generating electricity in an otherwise traditional power plant. Since Los Alamos National Laboratory began to advance geothermal technology in the 1970s, its proponents have regarded it as green energy's silver bullet. If it performs as promised, it would create electricity from a free energy source without harmful pollutants and negligible greenhouse gases. And unlike other renewable technologies like solar, which doesn't work when the sun is not out, 
and wind power, which shuts down when the wind does. Geothermal generates electricity 24-7. Geothermal has the greatest potential for providing significant additional amounts of electrical power for, for the world. Yet this seemingly potent technology remains virtually unknown to the public at large. And there are hurdles to overcome before geothermal lives up to its promise. Back at drill rig number 26, there's bad news from down hole. Rock samples taken from below reveal a problem with fissures, the tiny vein-like cracks that hold superheated groundwater. Uh, there appears not to be many fissures, but that could change. We're just basically trying to drill deeper and, and, and see if there are some openings coming up. Even though this well is struggling to hit high temperature water, Iceland has some of the most accessible geothermal resources on Earth. That's because it sits precariously atop one of the world's most volatile hotspots, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. A long part of this 65,000 kilometer fracture, the North American and Eurasian plates pull apart about two and a half centimeters every year, as magma and groundwater move closer to the surface where the heat is more accessible. In the past, Iceland was mainly known for volcanoes, glaciers, and the rock star, Bjork. But today, the remote island nation has a new claim to fame. It's one of the greenest countries on Earth. If you're looking for a gas or coal-fired plant in Iceland, you're out of luck. Almost 100% of their electricity comes from non-polluting hydro or geothermal plants. About 90% of the homes here are heated by geothermal power. Despite living in one of the coldest nations on Earth, the average Icelander pays less for electricity than those living in Nordic countries. Geothermal power is cheap, but it's also simple. Homes in Reykjavik have no need for water heaters. Simply turn on a faucet and out comes hot water piped in from a plant 27 kilometers away. It took us about 40 years to get enough hot water and put piping into all houses in Reykjavik. But since then, it has been one of the cleanest cities in the world. But Icelanders don't just rely on geothermal power at home. Everything from pools and spas to city sidewalks, to driveways, to power-hungry greenhouses, are heated by cheap geothermal resources. To keep up with growing demand for electricity, Iceland's Reykjavik Energy is constructing Headless Sadie, its newest plant. When completed in 2010, it will be one of the largest geothermal plants in the world. It houses turbines that provide enough power for 90,000 homes and is designed to be a showcase for geothermal, not only in Iceland, but for all nations. Headless Sadie, like all geothermal plants, emits almost no pollutants into the air or ground and relies solely on a renewable energy supply. Iceland's exploitation of its vast underground resources has in essence made it the Saudi Arabia of geothermal power. Some believe that if all the nations of the world followed their lead, polluting coal, gas, and nuclear power plants could be simply history. I think it's good for every country. If you don't believe us, then just come over and spend a couple of days and you will see this is, uh, this is very, very stable. This is secure, uh, this is environmental friendly, and it's cheap. 